Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to take a look at futuristic table props by Lemo Lab. Recently I purchased a few asset packages from them, so you'll probably see at least one other in the next few days. As you can see, as of the time of this recording, it was posted just about a week ago, so it's a very new package. You can see it's about 300 megabytes in size, and its current price is just under 15 That's one five fifteen dollars USD. The exact price at the time of this recording is $14.99, so essentially $15 USD. As always, decide for yourself if you feel that is worth it. So as typical, what you get is you get this folder here, and they break it down into the typical asset types, materials, meshes, prefabs, textures, and then this demo scene, which you can see in front of you, it's not much of a showcase. The camera actually isn't even positioned correctly, which is no big deal. I'm not, I'm not trying to bash them, uh, but for some reason, the camera was just looking off in a completely wrong direction. Also, for some reason, there was a generic cube here. Like it was as if someone accidentally did that um, and created just like a random cube. Oh, that's way off in the distance, so you can't even see it. But yeah, so when you load this, you'll see there's just like a random cube there for some reason. I thought it was being used for an anchor or something, but I couldn't find any purpose for it. But no big deal. You can always just delete it. And again, you're not actually going to use this scene. This is really just meant to be a showcase. So let's just zoom in. And then what I'll do is since I'm in the standard rendering pipeline, I'll add post-processing. And then I'll show you how you can make this a little bit more distinctive because everything has just a, for the most part, a white light. So like that's white, that's all white. So you got some different colored buttons, but for the most part, it's all white. We'll look at how you can basically customize that to get different colors. Because I've shown you a million times how you can instantiate an object. I don't want to waste your time, but I haven't done much with uh, making uh, distinct colors for this. So this is a good example because there's a lot of holograms and these kind of floating images as well. Okay, so let's just zoom in and see what we got. And it's pretty impressive because they didn't just do like a texture swap. They didn't just do uh, a different color palette. They actually, you can see these are like completely redesigned. And so we'll just scroll over. You can see there's monitors in the front, keyboards off there. Some of these are curved. This would be like some kind of like war table or something. And this would could be just like a regular table that people sit at. Just like a regular computer table, multi-leveled. Like I've seen people, uh, I used to have one like this where I had like the monitor up here, keyboard and mouse, some books over here. Yeah, I know no one reads books anymore, but those were the old days. And then that's about it. Okay, so say you're using this as like some kind of situation room or some kind of command and control center and you want to be able to have maybe a green color of something is secure a red color if something's in danger that kind of thing so let's just look at how you would do that so i've already installed post-processing so let me just double check so i believe if we go to packages yes post-processing is in here i've already reviewed how to add post-processing you can just take a look at that as i don't want to waste anyone's time you just download it from the unity registry from package manager so what you need to do is once you've installed it, you need to add a couple of the post-processing components to the camera for it to apply. So once you've installed post-processing and you click on add component, under rendering, you'll now have these new post-processing components. And by the way, this is for the standard renderer. I don't know if this package is compatible with HDRP or URP. This is the standard renderer. And the reason why I say that is because you don't need these um, you don't need these components if you are in uh, URP or HDRP. The post processing is built in, so we'll go post processing layer. And I already created a layer that I called PPL. So you just click on that. You can call it whatever you want, and then you need to put that same layer here. All right, clicked away. 
And let's see if we need to do anything else. That should be it for that component. Then you add a second rendering component that's post-processing and it's post-processing volume. And we'll make there a global effect. Profile, I already created one when I tried to record this earlier. You can just click on new, or if you already have one from another scene, you can click on that. Actually, I take it back. I don't have one. I'm sorry, I thought I did. So we'll just click on new, and there we go. And that created a um, the overrides. So we can click on add effect, unity, and we'll click on bloom. And that's how you add a glow. We can do intensity, and we can do threshold. And then it's just a matter of how intense you want it to do. Now, what you can do is you can do very low intensity, so most things don't glow, but do a high emission on a material by material basis. And that's what we're going to do. So for intensity, let's just do, say, two. And you could see everything got a little bit brighter. And if you zoom in, everything kind of has this kind of soft focus to it now. I'm going to shut off the mesh renderer for the plane because this is just creating a bunch of ambient glow that you really don't need. Your floor probably won't be white like that anyway, so we'll get rid of that. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Mesh renderer. There we go. Okay, so now this gives you a better sense of how much glow the individual objects have. So, like I said, in this one, I really want to look at how to make each object, say, have its own distinct color. So maybe this is somewhere from people to sit. Maybe it's at nighttime and you want to have like a soft light. So what if you want this to have like a blue glow to it? So I've clicked on the object. I'm going to come down to the material. As you can see, emission is checked. We'll click here. We'll click on a blue color. As you can see, it now has a blue glow to it. And then you could just increase how much glow it has. So here, this has a lot of glow. It has not affected anything else. Because again, I set the uh, global level to only, I believe it was an intensity of two, where I made its emission much stronger. So you can make object by object have much stronger glow effects. Okay, so let's come here and see if I can do what I hope I can do here. So we'll click on this and yes, it has its own hologram. It has its own object, I should say. So here's that renderer. So if we click here, again, emission, color, let's make this red. Now, you have this separate color. So that still has a blue glow. That now has a red glow. And just on and on and on. So I'll do one more. I don't want to waste anyone's time, but I just want to, you know, we learn through repetition. So say we want something to be green. I'm not quite sure what we would want. Let's just choose this one because this one looks like it will have its own separate screens. Yes, it does. So this screen, we could say, Again, emissions already checked. We'll click on color, click on green, and now it has a green glow to it. And then this screen could have its own separate glow. Uh, let's just choose what orange, maybe. Wow, that really glow. Probably a little bit too much, but that's okay. So I think that's about it. I think that's what I wanted to show you because I'm usually showing you how to instantiate things. How many times do you need me to show you that? Um, so this is something different that I don't think I've normally shown you. It's how you can tweak the visual effects. So this has a blue glow. That's red. That's orange. That's green. And so you see everything as white to begin with. That's actually good because that allows you to apply whatever color you want to it. If, say, the texture itself was already red, that would limit your abilities. So by making everything white to begin with, you can now make it whatever you want. So anyways, I hope that you found this helpful. Uh, if there's anything else you want to see, just let me know. If you enjoy this, please consider leaving a like. 
And I think that's about it. Like I said, I purchased at least one other asset from them, but I'm waiting back for some feedback because there was a minor issue and I really don't want to cover the package until I've gotten, I've given them a chance to address the issue, but it's, it's very minor. But again, I don't want to cover that package until I've given them a chance to address the issue. So I think that should about do it. I'll probably be doing some other assets this weekend too, and that should do it. So please enjoy the rest of your day.